Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Leah. I'm going to be your host for today. That's how it feels. <laughs> Intros are so awkward. And today I'm going to be reviewing the book series The Selection by Kira Cass. Now just some overall comments that I wanted to make about this series before I get into the, each book specifically is Kira Cass is a genius. Not for her work necessarily, but for how she wrote her story. This story is the most basic, kind of boringest story ever. I don't really know why I read the whole series. Now you know I don't really like the series, but I didn't enjoy it because the story is so basic, yet Kira Cass is able to draw out so much BS and like, not even like side quests, it's like just making it as long as she possibly could. And I mean, there's even like books between books, like 1.5, 2.5, which I didn't read, I just read, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there's even more that she wrote and I don't even know like what she could write about. So in that sense, she is a genius. <laughs> I mean, when I write, I write and I write to the point. And I like, it's like at the edge of your seat and you're like, oh my god, what's gonna happen next? But Kira Cass writes like, I wonder what she's gonna write next because there's nothing left to say about the story. <laughs> Okay, so now you know my overall view of the series, you're probably wondering, well then why did you read it? Because it was just such an easy read. Like, I could read it in the car, like audiobook, I could just, you know, I could read it at like 2.5 to even 3 times the speed, because literally it's like all dialogue. <coughs> and what I find about young adult books is a lot of it has to do with dialogue and not much story and not much world creating and it's just it's very bare it's like a skeleton of a story that has no meat on it i just find it very frustrating okay so i'll talk to you about the first book of the series called the selection and i actually i like this book because it had the most story to it i mean you know the first book of anything usually is the best of its kind because it's the whole premise so the premise of the selection is basically there's a society where there's this huge caste system. So if you're cast at a one, then you're like royal level. And if you're cast at like a level five, then you're like on the streets begging for money. And basically it's impossible to leave your caste and your caste is determined from your parents. So this is a whole society structure that was pretty interesting because you have people working for different cast members. So the whole society cast system was pretty interesting. It kind of felt like the Divergent series where they have the different types of cast systems there, but I didn't even enjoy that book either, so. There's basically this raffle of girls that are being selected in the hopes of marrying Prince Maxin. You have to submit your application or whatever, and they basically randomly pick 25, or I think, I don't know, the first book was 35 girls. And basically from there on, it's like The Bachelor, where the girls have to, you know, get to know Prince Maxon. They have to find if they have a connection, you know, he lets girls go as time goes by. It's very Bachelor. So if you like the show The Bachelor, you would definitely like this book. Although this book is much more PG rated and nothing exciting happens. And the story is told from this protagonist view. Her name is America. In the beginning, she's actually in love with this other dude. And they're kind of like childhood friends that they grew up together. But she's thinking, you know what, I have to do something for my family, I have to, you know, increase my cast number, I have to do something with my life, and even if you are selected and, you know, you're not chosen to be the one, but you're just selected, then your, your family gets income because of that. So she's like, you know, I want to make a name for myself, I want to do something, I'm going to apply. And the guy that she was with was like, yeah, go and do it, that's great. 
I don't know, that part, that part was kind of weird. Even he was like, oh, I don't deserve you and you should just go off on your own. I'd be like, dude, really? I'm like, fine. If you're gonna act like that, I hate guys that are like that, like feeling sorry for themselves. Go make a name for yourself, why don't you? Like you have the power too. Anyways, so she goes and she like pretends to like Prince Maxon and be like, oh yeah, it's so nice to meet you, whatever. But in reality, she's like, oh, I can't wait to go home. I can't wait to see my family. And she's not really present, but she's starting to take a liking to Maxon. She's realizing that, hey, this royal dude isn't half that bad. Maybe I should give him a try. And basically that's where the story goes. And you know, some girls are let go and then which brings me to the second book in the series called the elite so basically oh so spoilers if you want to read the entire series i would say stop here because i didn't even go to the end of the results of the selection of the first book but now it's kind of evident and you know even the titles kind of give it away but from now on there will be spoilers so if you don't want to hear them see you later thanks for tuning in like below and subscribe to my channel. <laughs> anyway, so for the spoilers, but honestly, like don't read the rest of the books. Like read the first one, yeah, but don't bother with, either, with these other ones. So the second book is called The Elite and basically Prince Maxon eliminated 25 girls out of the 30 and now there's the top five. So the top five elite girls from the selection. Basically, this book was entirely a waste of time. The only point of this book that was remotely interesting was the love triangle going on between the main girl, America, and her lover dude from back at home, and this Prince Maxon. That love triangle thing is basically the only remotely interesting thing that happens in this book. I mean, even in the first book and the second book, there's this whole political battle between the north and the south and when are they attacking us oh no we need to be besieged and what should we do and all that was so boring like when they even started getting to politics it was just no like i'm sorry kira cast but you can't write politics for shit and then there was book three called spoiler alert the one which is where basically prince maxon chooses the one for him and we all kind of know who that would probably be because there's two more books after this. Yeah. Basically, this whole book was him deciding and her deciding that they're the one for each other and everything in between is not even worth mentioning. So that was basically book three. Just when you thought the series couldn't be even more pointless, there comes book four. Book four is called The Air. And so basically what happened after the one was he picked America and now they're queen and king or whatever and now it's like 20 years down the line and now they have a kid and the kid's like turning 18, her name's Adolin, and now she's gonna go through a selection process. It's just so, like even hearing this story, like really, like do people really want to read this? No. Please, after like my review today, like just know that this is a pointless series to read, do not read it, do not waste your time, whatever. This book is even worse, even if it was a standalone, than the, like any of the other ones. Because Adolin is the most annoying, brattiest princess that you could have ever imagined. And it's not even that it's like a personal development thing where she's like, horrible in the beginning and then she's like, oh, fully enlightened in the end. She's just constantly always annoying and for no reason. Like, I don't know why Kira Cass made such... I've never seen such a bad protagonist before where I don't think any reader would be able to identify themselves with her and be able to relate to her because she's just such a brat and like mean and I don't know where this came from. It was like left field. So even Adolin doesn't even want to do the selection at first, but her mom's like, no, it's going to be good for you. Trust me. You know, you'll find the man of your dreams and then you can live happily ever after. And then like throughout the book, there's like, you know, slight things where, you know, the mom isn't doing so great and the father is feeling weak. And it's almost like the name of the book, the heir, right? It's like who will come to the throne afterwards. 
So yeah, that was book four. So the last book called The Crown, which is book five, is the most pointless of all. I, f I feel like I'm being very negative and mean, but honestly, do not read this series. Please do not. I don't know why it's so popular. I just... Uh... It really actually makes me feel like if I were to write a book, it would be like a freaking bestseller because anybody could beat this shit. So basically the crown is kind of like the heir to the crown, the crown, you know, from the heir, there was going to be a new person to the throne or whatever, right? So crown is actually, so who actually got the crown? And this book is basically about Adolin deciding on who she wants to spend the rest of her life with. And there's a lot of just filler and boringness and emptiness and I just, Please do not read this book. Please. If you want to read the first, sure, but do not continue on the series. Trust me. It's a waste of time. Okay, so that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed my review. Hope it wasn't too negative, and I hope you have a great day. Please like my video and subscribe down below to my channel so that you can see any future videos that I publish, and we'll keep in touch. Bye!